Great. Okay, it started recording now. Welcome again <laughs> to the praise and worship session. Uh, great, great to see all of you, uh, everybody online, uh, from Benny, Anusha, Divya, Sam, Lucy. Good to see you. Thanks for joining in. Okay, and good to see all of you here as well. Okay, I hope you all are doing well health-wise and everything. Uh, let's pray, shall we? Yeah. Okay, Father, we. We thank you for this opportunity. Lord, we thank you that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you that you are good. Lord, how wonderful and how beautiful are you, Lord. How majestic is your name in all the earth, Jesus. Father, we see, Holy Spirit, that you are the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And so even as we learn from your word today, Lord, I pray that, that you would pour out your wisdom and, and that there would be a revelation of who you are, God. So open up our hearts, open up our minds, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Isn't this such a wonderful opportunity just to learn from his word? Yeah. Um, such a privilege to just be able to hold the Bible and open the Bible and and just read and be blessed, isn't it? Yes? Yeah, uh, a lot of people have died trying to save the Bible. A lot of wars have been fought just to preserve the Bible. A lot of men have tried to completely destroy the Word of God. Right. There are so many rulers who've burnt part of the scriptures to ashes. Uh, but still, God has preserved his word for you and for me. Amen? Amen. And today, we have so many different versions of the Bible. Um, and so I, I'm always grateful for the opportunity that I have, that I get to share what I've learned uh, on this topic of praise and worship. And I'm always very grateful for the word of God. Um, right, uh, John 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He is the Word. Amen. And the, verse 14 says, He became flesh and dwelt among us. Isn't it? And then in John chapter 6, Jesus says, every word I speak is spirit. Um, and uh, there's so many things to learn from the Word, and I hope you... We learn together, okay? So in the last class, we looked at the posture of worship. Does anyone remember anything from last class? Nothing. <clears throat> what do you remember from last class? One point at least. So. By the way, all of you have access to the online classroom? All of you? OK, so I have shared the PDF notes for, uh, you know, for the session I took last class. So please feel free to download it, OK? Um, so yeah, what did we learn very quickly? Yeah. OK. What did we learn last class? We learned about worship. Yeah, because it's praise and worship class. Like, duh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Hebrew word. OK. All right, so what's the Hebrew word for worship? Shaha. Yeah? That's one Hebrew word for worship. Everybody say shaha. It's very nice and clean, isn't it? But there's a little bit of phlegm there. We'll do more, OK? Get ready. OK. So. We learned about a good posture of worship, isn't it? A good posture of worship is surrender, is laying down everything. Yes? Um, so if there is a good posture, that means there is also? Everybody say bad posture. OK, and so what is that bad posture? Pride, isn't it? Everybody say pride. OK, look at the person next to you and say pride. <laughs> so 
say don't be proud don't just smile at him uh, just say don't be proud just give him a nudge yes. don't be proud okay just uh, okay guys i'm just doing some things here in class okay but uh, i'm very sad that i can't do all of this with you online okay uh, okay just stand up for a second okay so just hold the person next to you as in next, hold their shoulders and wake them up just wake up, say, wake them up. Shake them, shake them, yeah. <laughs> not not so violently also, but yeah. you can give them. A, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. All right, now do that to the other person. Yeah, yeah, you do. You are so nice, dude. Such a good boy you are. You're only smiling. <laughs> We have some amazing people in the class, guys. Okay, they're just so good. They don't want to shake the other person. They don't want to be violent. They want to be silent. Okay, just sit down. <laughs> All right, thanks, Elder. Okay, uh, Sonia uh, says, worship to bow down, uh, posture is surrender to God. Yeah, all of that. Thank you. Um, so just refer back to those notes because it's very important just to understand the basics of. Uh, of what worship is all about. Um, but today, what we will look at is the different postures for praise, OK? And how it's ex expressed in different Hebrew words, OK? There are seven different Hebrew words for praise, OK? Like, if you remember in the last class, I said in English, for love, there's only one word, boring. Right, um, but in Hebrew there are different expressions of praise, and hence we have seven different Hebrew words for praise. Are you excited to learn a little bit? Yeah, can we learn a little bit? Go a little deeper. Okay, cool. The first uh, Hebrew word for praise is yada. Okay, everybody say yada. Okay, good. All right, it's. In other words, um, I've titled it as the hands of praise. So the meaning of this word, yada, okay, and the spelling is all there. Now it comes from, now we know where we get the word Judah or the name Judah from, isn't it? We get the name Judah or Yuda, is that right? In different languages, it comes from this root word of yada. It means so, D A H. Da or A ah means cast out. Okay, that Y, the spelling of that is what? Y A D A H. So A H, the last part of that word A ah, means to cast out. And Y A D, Yad, means hand. That means to praise him with your hands cast out, with your hands stretched out. Okay, or the lifting up of our hands. That is what. Yada means. Okay, depending on the translation of the Bible or the version of the Bible, it's this word is used at least 120 times. Uh, okay, so it means to give thanks with loud praise, uh, to river or worship with extended hands. Okay. And another root meaning of this was also, it was meant to throw something, to throw stone. How many of you have thrown a stone? Yeah, very good. OK. <laughs> very proud. I threw a stone. <laughs> right? So in other words, it's saying, it, the imagery here is, let's throw our praises at God. Like, lavish him with my praise. I'm going to praise him with my hands stretched out. And that is a posture of praise, isn't it? Like, in worship and singing and what, we lift up our hands, isn't it? We spread out our hands and we worship. We don't, And this is the meaning of it. It is biblical. It's not just based on your feeling. OK, I feel like raising my hand, so I will lift my hands. I don't feel like raising my hand, so I will not praise him by lifting up my hands. Right? 
we are too emotional beings isn't it like it's everything has to be based on our feeling huh? i don't feel like going to college today <laughs> right i will come to college but i don't feel like paying attention in this class so i will physically be here but mentally be in switzerland so again you know when we learn about praise and worship the more we learn about praise and worship the more you learn that it is very less about the way you feel okay so it doesn't matter how you feel you still continue to praise we are commanded to praise him okay uh, let's uh, read a few scriptures in our bible uh, we're going to be very fast any fast bible turners here okay so keep the mic ready uh, have your mic ready okay so let's read psalm 28 verse 2 psalm 28 verse 2 your hands have got to be really fast okay so we're going to go through a lot of scriptures yes hear the voice of my supplications when i cry out to you when i lift my hands toward your holy sanctuary okay so psalm 28 verse 2 it say, goes on to say when i lift up my hands towards your sanctuary okay the sanctuary uh, everybody say sanctuary Okay, that's a word used for the house of God or the temple of God. Okay, so the house of God or the sanctuary was on a high mountain. And you would have read, uh, read some Psalms that say, I was glad when they said to me, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. Do you remember that? Or was it only in my Bible? Okay. Um, there are Psalms that, that is called as songs of ascent. Say songs of ascent. So that means ascent, ascending. That means going up. Okay. So there were songs that people would sing as they climbed the hill of the Lord. Okay. That's the mountain of the Lord. And so the psalmist is saying here, I will raise my hands towards the sanctuary. Okay. What is he doing? Yada. Okay. Let's read another verse. Uh, Psalm 63 verse 4. Psalm 63, verse 4. Thus, I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. Okay, do you mind reading that one more time, please? Yes. Thus, I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. I will lift up my hands in your name. Okay. Um, if someone online can keep sharing these scriptures in the chat section that will be great for all of us as well okay thanks elder i see that you've already done but yeah um, does anybody have a hindi bible okay so can you read that same verse psalm 63 verse 4 and i want you to tell Yeah, read that again, please. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Hello. Isi prakar me jivan bar tujhe dhan kehta rahunga aur tera naam lekar apne haath uthaunga. So does it say lift up the hands? That's what it means again. Yes, no. Okay. Uh, any other language do we have? Tamil, Malayalam, Telugu. So, see, the thing I want us to do is um, different languages would choose very interesting words, and I want to see, you know, what they what they say. So, any other language? Okay. Uh, Anusha, I see your hands raised. Just one minute. We'll come to you. Yeah. Uh, we all need to hear. Okay. How do you say a little loudly in Telugu? 
నా మంచం మీద నిన్ను జ్ఞాపకము చేసుకుని రాత్రి జ్ఞానమునందు నిన్ను ధ్వనించుచున్నప్పుడు సో ఇస్ సింగ్ ద సేమ్ థింగ్ యాజ్ ద ఇంగ్లీష్ లాంగ్వేజ్ లిఫ్ట్ అప్ యూర్ హ్యాండ్స్ ఇస్ ద వర్డ్ సేస్ ఓహి కంపేరింగ్ ఆ యు టెల్ యు నో ద లాంగ్వేజ్ నో Psalm 63 verse 4 correct no sounds different huh? bible only no so <laughs> okay all right so so i will give thanks as long as i live uh, and i will raise my hands to you okay um that's again yada all the scriptures that is mentioned in the notes will speak about this word yada okay let's read some more scriptures if that's okay uh psalm 141 verse 2 i love this verse psalm 141 verse 2 let's my prayer be set before you as an in incense the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice yes thank you so may the lifting up of my hands be as an evening sacrifice okay um that's again it was talking about the same word that we are learning yata um i see daniel has shared something in hindi daniel i was the worst student of hindi in school so uh, i couldn't read hindi properly in school so now also i can't read daniel sorry you <laughs> okay but thank you um <clears throat> let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice okay so if there was evening sacrifice that means there was also morning sacrifice all right uh, let's continue to read some more scriptures let's go uh, let's go a little out of psalms go to first kings chapter 8 verse 22 first kings kings yeah first king chapter 8 verse 22 then solomon stood before the altar of the lord in the presence of all the assembly of israel and spread out his hands towards heaven awesome thank you yeah, anusha uh, yeah can you share what you wanted to share you can feel free to unmute and speak yes yes sir actually i wanted to share but some sorry the audio wasn't clear but uh, okay okay first kings 8:22 it says and the solomon stood before the altar of the lord in the presence of all the congregation of israel and spread forth his hands towards um heaven okay so this is the first hebrew word yada it simply means hands cast out praising the lord with your with an outstretched arms okay there are more scriptures uh, that is mentioned in your notes we are not because of time i'm not going to go through all of them but is this clear what is yada means praise him with with the cast out hands okay let's go to the second hebrew word second hebrew word we are calling it as the expectation of praise expectation of praise the hebrew word for that is is what thoda okay not thoda okay it's not, not little not hindi okay thoda uh, this hebrew word or this expression of thoda is mentioned at least 30 times in the bible okay um now this word toda also comes from the same root word as yada but this is with the intention of giving thanks okay so you are stretching out your hands and you are giving thanks and the definition goes on to say you are giving thanks to the things you are yet to receive Are you with me right you are giving thanks to god for the blessings yet to receive or breakthrough that you are praying for but you are yet to receive and that's what thoda means okay 
So in your note, it says Torah comes from the same principle root word as Yada, but is used more specifically. It literally means an extension of the hand in adoration, affirmation, and acceptance by way of application. So you're giving, you're thanking God for things not yet received. You are thanking God for the things not yet received. One of the famous songs in the Old Testament was, um, God is good, his loving kindness endures forever. Did you know that song? The famous song in the Old Testament had only two lines. It didn't have verse 1, verse 2, then chorus, verse 3, bridge. No. It says, God is good and his love endures forever. That means they were declaring that he is good, regardless of what their situation was or what their circumstances was. Are you with me? So in my bad times, you are good, your love endures forever. When I don't feel like it, you are good and your love endures forever. When I feel like it, you are good and your love endures forever. In my good times, you are still good. In my bad times, you are still good. Okay. So that's what Hoda is. It's the same expression of lifting up of the hands, but with a more specific intention is, I'm going to thank you for the things I have not yet received. I'm praying for this miracle. I still haven't received it, but I will give you thanks anyways. Are you with me? I'm praying for a financial breakthrough. I am, I'm waiting on it, but while I wait on it, I'm going to give you thanks. Are you all with me? Yes. No. OK, good. So that's the second Hebrew word for praise is Toda. OK, let's read a few scriptures. Psalm uh, 141, again, verse 2. Some of the verses are repeated. Uh, and some, let's read Psalm 88, verse 9. Uh, I see that Elder has already shared that. Psalm 88, verse 9, it says, mine eye mourneth. My re by reason of affliction, Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. There's a combination of prayer and praise, an expression of praise there. All right, that is Psalm 88, verse 9. Right. Uh, see, because of the lack of time, I'm not going to read all the scriptures, but there are a lot of scriptures mentioned in your notes. Um, go into your Bible, highlight it, write it down, read it, read it again uh, until it ministers to you. Okay? So that's the second Hebrew word for praise is Toda. Uh, let's move on to the third pr uh, word, a Hebrew word for praise. We're calling it the celebration of praise. Everybody say celebration. Okay, how many of you have been, how many of you have celebrated something in life? Anybody celebrated anything? Okay, very quickly, what have you celebrated? My birthday, sir. Uh -huh, sir. Christmas, okay. A anybody online celebrated anything? Okay, what is? what have you celebrated? Birthday. You celebrate every day. Bindas. You know, celebrate. Okay. All right. What have you celebrated? Sorry? Easter. Okay. All right. All right. You? Graduation. High school graduation. Okay. Yeah. Holiday. Any holiday. Celebration. Okay. <laughs> Birthday. Yeah. Cricket victory. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we've we either celebrated or we have seen people celebrate. Isn't it? Right? Um, I watch a lot of uh, football. I'm not going to say which is my favorite English, uh, which is my favorite football team because they are really bad at the moment. <laughs> Sam knows what I'm talking about. This is horrible. But when they score a goal or when someone hits a six or when someone takes a wicket or whatnot, you see the entire stadium celebrate, right? They just erupt, isn't it? Like everybody, and there's an ex it's not just an expression, but they're also putting up their hands. It's like, yay! Right? 
They're doing it for someone else, we are doing it for God. Isn't it? And so that's what this third word for Hebrew, uh, for praise is, is halal. From the root word, we get hallelujah. Right? Hallelujah is praise Yahweh. But we get this word hallelujah from the root word called halal, which simply means the definition. Now, this, is, this word is mentioned at least 160 times in the Bible. So look at the definition of what it is. In the notes, it says to shine or to boast, to make a show, right? to put on a show, to rave and to rejoice, to be clamorously. Is there a blank over there? Yeah? Okay. It means to be clamorously foolish. And so you remember David's praise when he brought the brings the Ark of the Covenant into uh, the into the city of Jerusalem. His wife Michael thinks he's a fool, right? So, so it doesn't say that you have to become mad. So your expression of praise will look like it's foolish to the people of the world. They will not understand it. But the Hebrew word for praise, halal, it says your praise and your worship should be like that. It's like every day, every moment, like you said, you should be able to celebrate. We celebrate God's faithfulness once a year on our birthdays. Lord, thank you for being faithful last year. Continue to be faithful this year. But every day or every moment of our life should be a celebration of who he is and what he has done. Amen? The one of the word here for halal is to boast. Boast means to show off. My daddy is the strongest. You remember that ad? A very old ad. You know, it's what is the kid doing? It's like is the kid is boasting or showing off. That, that his or her father is the strongest kind of thing, isn't it? And so, you, you know, when you're facing a challenging time, is your showing off is like, okay, you know, do you remember the spy stories where uh, Moses sends 10 spies into the land of Canaan? Yes? There were 10 spies, Moses goes to the promised land and they come back. There are eight people who say, is like, you know, we can't go. There are giants. In that land. But there were two people who saw very differently. Who are they? Joshua and Caleb. Right? They were boasting. It's like, yes, there are giants. Yes, they are big. <laughs> but my God is bigger. Isn't it? What are they doing? In a way, they are expressing, they are boasting, they are showing off who my God is. Right? So there's a question to you is, do you boast enough of your God? Um, let's read a couple of scriptures. We'll see, uh, you know, let's read Psalm 22, verse 23 and 26. Who you fear the Lord, praise him, all your descendants of Jacob, glorify him and fear him, all your offspring of Israel. Yeah, thank you. So verse 23 of Psalm 22, it says, you who fear the Lord, praise him. So the word used there for praise is halal. Okay, so... The Hebrew word used there is halal. That means to celebrate, to rave, show off, boast him. Okay, uh, You who fear the Lord, halal him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him. Verse 26, it says, The afflicted will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. Again, the Hebrew word used there is halal. Okay, uh, Let's read... First Chronicles chapter 23, verse 30. First Chronicles, not Corinthians. Uh, 
chapter 23, verse 30. The son of Hab Arman, Aaron and Moses, and Aaron was set apart, he and his son forever, that he should sanctify the most holy thing to burn incense before the Lord to minister to him and he give the blessing in his name of his name forever. Thanks, Asap. Okay, that's First Chronicles chapter 23, verse 30. Uh, but I want to read us a scripture that is not in your notes. Um, I want to us to go to Second Chronicles chapter 5. Let's go to Second Chronicles chapter 5. Okay, uh, and uh, wait, hold on a second. So, Second Chronicles chapter five. Uh, let's read. Okay, twelve to fourteen. I'll read it for us. Okay, Second Chronicles. Everybody there? Yeah, Second Chronicles chapter five, verse twelve to fourteen, and this is what it says: And the Levites who were the singers. All those of Asaph and Heman and Jerathan, with their sons and their brethren, stood at the east end of the altar, clothed in white linen, having with them 120 priests sounding with trumpets. Okay, let's before going to verse 13 and verse 14, a couple of things. Let's notice there. The Levites, the you know, the priests. And the sons of Asaph, Heman, and Jerathan. All of their sons and their brethren stood at the east end of the altar. Okay, so one of the ways, important things, and how you can study the Bible is if there is a specific detail, right? If there is a, a specific detail that is mentioned, you have to ask why. Okay, so for example, I'm, I'm not going to go into that, but it says they all stood at the east end of the altar. Why not north? Why not south? Why not west? I'm not going to give the answer. You figure that out. Okay, so it says they all stood at the east end of the altar, clothed in white linen. That means they didn't wear whatever they felt like. Okay, I'm going to church today. I will feel I will wear whatever I feel like. No, but they did not think that. They were all clothed in white linen, having symbols, all the instruments, and 120 priests. How many? How many? 120 priests with which instrument? 120 priests with trumpets. Okay, all right. Now, Indeed, it came to pass where the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. What they are doing there is halal, the Hebrew word used. Now, see the result of what they did because they did that the house of the lord was filled with the cloud so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud for the glory of the lord filled the house of god okay all right again there's so many things that's happening um 120 people now how many of you have seen an orchestra not the ones we see in our cities in the roadside and all okay but you know, uh, like with all the violins, you know, and the drums and flute, and you know, so the biggest orchestra is, will have at least 140 people. So there's the string instruments. The string section will have all the violin, viola, cello. The woodwinds will be to the right, you know, with all the flute and clarinet, oboe, all these different instruments. There's the percussion section at the back with all the drums and the cymbals uh, and the vibraphone and all of that. And then there's the brass section at the back, 
the brass section will have all the trumpets and uh, the French horn, like the, the one that is curved. And trombone is, you know, you've seen people play like this. Yeah, that's a trombone. Now, the brass section of an orchestra is the loudest. So a brass section will have maximum of four to five trumpet people. Just four or five. And they can easily sound louder than all the other 110 people. So you've seen this guy, conduct, conductor, you know, who does all this? You know, he's called as a conductor, right? He will always tell them to be soft. Just five people playing the trumpet. Five. Here, how many of them are playing the trumpet? 120 people in praise. The whole city of Bangalore would have heard them. Right? It would have been loud. And it says that all the singers also came. The recurring word there, okay, the one word that's repeated is one accord, one voice. That means they were all in unity. Right? In one voice they lifted up and they sang. In one accord they, play, they praised him together. When they did that, the cloud and the presence of God came into the temple that even the priests could not stand. What they were doing is halal. Right? Okay. Oh, wow. Time is going fast. Okay. But are you all following what I'm saying? Are you all with me? Yes? Okay. Everyone? Okay, cool. Awesome. The fourth Hebrew word for praised, I love this. This is, uh, this is my second favorite Hebrew word. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready? It's Shabbat. Yeah. Flem. Okay. <laughs> okay, say Shabbat. Oh, no. I'm very nice and I'm very decent. I'm going to say it as Shabbat. Because I'm cute, you know. Guys, it's not Shabak. Okay, it's Shabak. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. What about you guys online? All okay, right? Yeah, in your rooms, behind your screens, with the camera off, you can say it to yourself. <laughs> okay. Want to say it again? Everybody loudly. I'm not hearing the phlegm, guys. <laughs> okay, so Shabak simply means a loud adoration or a shout of praise. Right? To commend, to adore, to triumph. Shabak means to address in a loud tone. That's what that blank is there for, right? To address in a loud tone. Tone. That's what Shabak is to praise him loudly. So, how many times in the Bible says shout for joy? Right? Psalm 95, it says, Shout for joy, all the earth. Shouting doesn't have any specific word, isn't it? You can shout whatever you want. Like, yeah, yeah, bear, you know. It, it, it's not saying have a specific word, it's just say shout. Any stories that comes to your mind? Wall of Jericho, right? They went seven days. On the seventh day, they went seven times, and they did not say, what's up? Let the walls come down. What does God command them to do is on the seventh day, let them lift up a loud voice. What did they do? Shabbat. Okay. Guys, I, I, I hope that we are not just gaining information and as in just learning about the Hebrew words, but then for every word that we are learning that there is a power, right, that the Spirit of God gives. It. So as in faith we step out and we lift up our hands and shout for joy, God does something that you cannot see in the natural, but something is being moved in the spiritual. Are you with me? Right, so fourth, that's the fourth Hebrew word for praise is Shabbat. And the fifth Hebrew word, 
uh, you, this is one of my favorites, is Tahila. Tahila. Everybody say Tahila. <clears throat> yeah, some of you are thinking uh, Tequila. That's the wrong spirit. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Tahila is one of my favorite words simply because it says, in simple words, it's saying, let your heart be a library of praise. So it simply says, erupt in a spontaneous song. What is it saying? It's like, break out in spontaneous song. OK, uh, let's go to an, uh, a Psalm, Psalm 18 very quickly. Fast, fast, fast. OK, we're all there. Psalm 18. Now, if I asked you to start reading Psalm 18, Everybody would start reading from verse 1. I have done this exercise many times. I'm not going to do this now because I don't have time. But every time I asked anybody to read Psalm 18 verse, you know, just start reading Psalm 18, they will all read from verse 1, which is fine. It's OK, right? It says, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So, so shall I be saved from my enemies. But before verse 1, there is something that is written. Yes or no? It says, David wrote this psalm or sang this psalm spontaneously when God saved him from his enemies who were trying to kill him. Has anybody try anybody here, you know, has anybody tried to kill you here? No one, no? It's a good thing, no? <laughs> Anyone online? <laughs> so we don't really fully understand what David is going through. So David has just been saved, right, from being killed. Now, we have to remember so many things about David. David was a shepherd, right? He was a king. But one of the things we tend to forget is David was a warrior. David was a warrior. He killed Goliath. When you looked at this Goliath, he says, like, who is this uncircumcised guy, you know, who's, uh, you know, uh, profaning against the name of the God of Israel? Something burned in him. He was a warrior. When a lion or a bear came, took his lamb and went, he went after the lion. Right? One verse says, he held the lion by its beard. How close do you have to be to catch a lion with, by its beard? Yeah, face to face. So now that we understand that David has just been saved, you know, uh, by, from being killed, and that he is a warrior, he is not going to, you know, sing, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock. The healer, he erupted in this spontaneous song. In the forest where there was nobody, he would have shouted. He said, I love you, Lord, my rock, my strength, my shield. Are you with me? Right? So when your heart is a, it becomes a book of praise, your heart erupting in a song will not become difficult. Are you with me? Are you with me? Right? So, you see, the answer to this question, you know, can you praise him does not mean can you sing. Okay? Worship or praise does not mean can you sing. The question is, does your heart have a song? That's what it is. Are you with me? All right, so that's the, the fifth Hebrew word for praise is Tehillah. And the sixth Hebrew word for praise is Barak. Okay? 
it simply again means to kneel or bow down. Now you might ask, what is the difference between the Hebrew word for shaha? Shaha is again is to fall face down on the ground. What is the difference between that and barak? So the praise, the Hebrew word for praise here, barak, is it's a more um, military term. That means you're kneeling down. You would have seen this in movies, you know, is you kneel down before the king, but your eyes or your head will be lifted up and your eyes will be on the king. Have you seen that? So you kneel down, but your eyes are on the king. So that's another posture of praise here is Barak. It's like I bow down in your presence and I acknowledge that you are my king. And finally, after the six words of Hebrew was for praise, the last word for Hebrew is Zamar. Now he talks about music. Finally, at the end, towards the very end, the Hebrew word Zamar is to play the instrument, to praise him with a stringed instrument, with a lyre. Right? Psalm 144, verse 9, it says, I will sing a new song to you, O God. On the harp of ten strings, I will sing praises. Uh, when you read through the book of First Chronicles uh, and also the Second Chronicles, you see David invented musical instruments. Why is David such a big deal in the, uh, in the topic of worship is because he was not an ordinary guy. So he built, he made instruments, right? When nobody knew what a guitar was, he made a guitar. He built a guitar and said, guitar, right? Uh, in music college, when I was studying music history, uh, we had to learn who made the piano or who invented the piano. There's this guy in the 17th century called Bartolomeo Cristofari. He is the guy who built the piano. And so building one instrument itself is a big deal. Bible says David made instruments and we don't even know how many instruments. One day he woke up, he must have said, Let, let's make a drums, <laughs> you know, let me build a new instrument. Let me figure out a new way of praising my God. Are you with me? Right. So let's very quickly go through all the seven words, uh, Hebrew words for praise. First one is what? Come on. We're done. First Hebrew word for praise. Yada. Second one. Fast, fast. Toda. Okay. Third one. Halal, halal. Okay. Fourth one. Hey. Hey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Fifth one. Tahila. Okay. Sixth. Barak. And finally, Zamar. All right. So those are the seven Hebrew words for praise. Thanks for logging in, joining in. God bless you. I'll see you on Thursday. God bless you.